gift extraordinaire. And just to give you a, a recap of what we did the uh, first week itself. Last week, Reverend Mike Constantine was with us and uh, he shared a Mother's Day message on Jesus and the women that were you know, with him for the ministry. And I think, you know, there were a couple of uh, salient points that he uh, pointed out. And one of which is this, and it says that Jesus valued the women, right? Um, wherever he went, he valued women. And the other point is, I think he made very clear to us, is that women were safe in the presence of Jesus, right? Uh, and I can't, she asked us a very pointed question. Are women safe in your presence? Right, are women safe, you know, in the presence when they are in your workplace? Are women safe, you know, um, with you where, wherever you are? Okay, um, men ought to be men of righteousness and holiness. Okay, that is a very important uh, thing for you and I. That, you no, know, we will be people who will not be taken advantage of others, but rather we will be protectors of those, you know, who are with us. Amen. So protect your children, protect your nieces, Protect your nephews, protect no, you know, wherever um, women or you know, uh, little girls are around you, that they know that they are safe in your presence. It was a very uh, practical message that was delivered to us. So today we're going to deal with the area of the gifts extraordinaire. Just to have a recap, it says the gifts of God are more effective than a thousand wise ways of men. When a gift of the Lord is being operated, it is able to open the doors that have been closed, right? And God is able to do something powerful. The other thing that we need to know is that love determines whether we are everything or whether we are nothing. So no matter what we do, it must be motivated, it must be centered um, by love. Because we rise or we fall whether, you know, based on whether we have love or not. And then the third thing is this, is that an earnest prayer is the gateway to access the gifts extraordinaire. God is, wants no, to give us those valuable gifts, but He tells us we've got to walk through those doors of prayer. Huh? Attending seminars is wonderful, right? Being prayed for is wonderful, but we need ourselves to go in and seek the face of God. I heard a very powerful uh, testimony, and this was uh, not from the... Um, missionaries that went over to one of the nations in Africa. So there was this young missionary uh, couple with the children that were there and went over to this village. And it says that they had, the villagers, you know, were hostile. They were not really hostile, they were not friendly. And they were looking for a place to stay. And it says, we've got no place, but there is a place that is outside there at a shelter. Go and stay there. Right, and then we'll think of what to do next for you. So they went in to put up a night in that place. So in the night itself, as, the, no, as it was dark, uh, getting dark, it says it was a terrible thunderstorm. There was rain, there was wind and so forth. And so, you know, the family began to pray to God. We're going to pray to God, God, you have able to stop the rain, you know, stop the wind. Jesus was there at the boat and he spoke and they obeyed. And so they prayed and they prayed and they prayed until the prayer began to be frustration. And they says, God, why are you not answering? We are holding on to your word. And it kept on raining the whole night through. So they managed to go through the night. And then the villagers who were unfriendly came to them the next morning and they says, we all want to believe in Jesus. So they were surprised. What did we do? We came in here, you know, yesterday, and uh, you did not take us in and provide for us any place. But he said, now you want to believe in Jesus. He says, tell us why. They, they, were, they were astonished. And so this is what the villagers told us, told them. They say, you know, that's the place where we ask you to stay. That's the place in the night time. That's when the lions come. They say the lions come and they like to hang around that area. Sometimes our kids who get up in the middle of the night, you know, and uh, sometimes they run out and they run to the place to play and they say they are being eaten by the lions. So they say, you know, when you came and uh, when you were there, it says that the, 
thunders roar, you know, and uh, the lions were, didn't come at all, and you are all alive. We want the God that you believe in, right, that will be able to protect you in such a situation. This was the testimony that was shared by this uh, granddaughter, you know, of Smith Wigglesworth. Some of you may have heard of his name, right, a great preacher, one person that God used in mighty miracles. Um, There's a the granddaughter and the parents, the mother, you know, was actually a missionary and that's what she saw firsthand of the power of God. And I talked to you about three steps that Jesus took to move from fullness to power. Okay, he was embedded deeply in the Word of God. He was highly secured as a child of the Lord. He was not, you know, um, insecure that he wants to prove himself. There was nothing to prove. He knew who he was and he is. And he was exclusively sold out to God. He didn't bow down to any pressure, right, um, whatever the enemy had to offer him. So in this world, there are many things that will try to, you know, many uh, individuals that will try to call you to compromise your values, to, con- to compromise your character, okay, for gain, for access, for connection. But we must stand strong in the Lord and say that we are so solely, no, sold out to God. Today I'm going to talk to you about Give Extraordinaire 2. That's part 2 of it. And I want to share with you more on the area on how to be ready, how to move, and how to exercise those areas of gifts. Are you ready? Okay, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we commit ourselves to you this morning. You are here. You're the God who dwells in the praises of your people. And we have invited you with our praises, lifted up your great name. We ask even now that you will prepare our hearts to expect something to happen, to expect you to continue to move in our midst. Speak to hearts here, dear God, that those whom you are stirring and those of you who have given those gifts that they will be excited or they will know the tools on how to operate in those gifts. I pray that those who need these gifts, Father, that their hearts also will be open for you to touch them and meet that need in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, there are a couple of things that we need to prepare ourselves in in, when we want to be used of the Lord in the area of the spiritual gifts. Let me go very quickly, first of all, to spiritual preparation. For us to be used of God, we have to be spiritually prepared. And one is that we need to honor the Holy Spirit. And obviously, when we honor Him, we must not grieve the Spirit of God. These are the gifts of the Spirit. If you want to be used by Him, we must be able to you know, um, welcome Him. If we do things that will hurt Him or that will reject Him, then you'll find that you will not be able to move in those areas of gifts. So these are the scripture verses. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 to 31. I want you to read it together. Ready? One, two, go. Very good. Wow, today your voice are very gentle. Okay. So next thing afterwards, when you go and order a, a plate of wonton mee and it comes half an hour later, also speak gently to the waitress, okay? <laughs> uh, okay. Do not let your, any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up others according to needs. So our words, what? Needs to build up rather than tear down. Okay. So whoever listens to you, whoever listens to me, will be built up means encouraged, means to be strengthened, means to be, you know, uh, lifted up. Don't, you know, when people leave our presence, they put their head down, you know, and walk away. Or they walk away angry, they walk away discouraged. But they need to be 
Walking away, it says, greater resolve is, yes, now I know what to do. Why it says, do not grieve. The word grieve the Holy Spirit means do not make him sorrowful. So what are the things that make him sorrowful or hurt him? Unwholesome talk, bitterness in verse 31, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Right? When you cut down another individual, when you have ill intentions, when you put someone down, those things, what? The Bible says, grieves the Holy Spirit. Don't for one moment think, oh, God understands. Or oh, I'm in a situation, you know, um, I'm in this difficulty, so the Spirit of God will understand why I am so you know, easily ticked off, why I am so easily irritable, why I am so easily angry. But it says, the Word of God says, we grieve the Holy Spirit. And when we grieve the Holy Spirit, you see, when someone, when someone grieves you, that means you immediately feel an immediate pain. Emotionally, you feel pain in your heart. You are grieved. When your child, you know, disrespects you or calls you by an unkind name and it says, why are you doing that? It the person, you still love the individual, but the person has what grieved you deeply. And we can grieve the Holy Spirit by these unthoughtful, you know, uh, wrongful actions. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. You see, when we do not honor the Spirit of God, but rather grieve Him by our flesh, then we actually drive the Spirit away from us. We put a wall of separation because what the Spirit of God wants is contrary to what our flesh wants. So when your flesh rises up, the Spirit is being pushed aside. But when the Spirit of God indwells us and He controls us, then our flesh is, you know, being crucified. So you will know whether you're walking in the Spirit of God. Have you recently been responding, you know, uh, led by the Spirit, by the fruit of the Spirit? Are you responding in a way that your old self, you know, the Bible tells us the old man, uh, doesn't refer to your grandfather, your father. The old man which is inside, that, that the person that is unregenerated before, or the old woman on the inside, if you're a lady, comes out again. Then you find that, well, if it rears its ugly head too very often, then you know that your flesh has to be nom nominating you. And the Spirit of God, you know, has been grieved. So there must be spiritual preparation. Honor the Spirit of God. He is the third person of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is not an it, which is not an inanimate object, but it is the, the Holy Spirit is He. he it's a person. Right? He can be grieved. He guides. He comforts. He leads. He speaks to us. Only a person is able to do that. The, the other spiritual preparation is this, we need to pray in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit, if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, means you are able to pray in tongues. And the more we pray in the Spirit, it begins to prime us, prepares us. You see, when we pray in the Spirit, our spirit man on the inside intercedes before the Spirit of God. He moves us to pray. Let's look at some scripture verses. In 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. Instead, no, indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries, what? With his spirit. Your spirit man is speaking. So when you want to move with the things of the spirit, our spirit person being on the inside must be heightened, must be sensitized, must be tuned into the spirit of God. Therefore, Paul says, I thank God I speak in tongues more than all of you. Now, he was not trying to say that I'm more spiritual, but he's trying to give an example of his own life that Paul speaks in tongues. What? Very little. What does he do? Some of the time, you know, 
But it says he speaks in tongues more than all. And he was speaking to a church that you know, had the uh, activities of the Spirit of God happening in the congregation. But it says I speak in tongues more than all of you do. So when we want to move in the things of God, we need to be praying in the Spirit. We need to get our spiritual life, get your prayer life up and praying in the Spirit. The other ways of spiritual preparation is this. There must be authentic worship. Authentic worship. Worship means... Now, when I say it's authentic, it means this is a very common word right now. It is a, a hip word. In fact, you know, um, I'm going to use it. When there's authentic worship, it means there's also fake worship. Huh? A lot of fake news, fake things, fake this, fake that. Right? Um, well, there are fake worship. That means it sounds like worship, it looks like worship, but it's not worship. That means things of the expression of whether lifting our hands, singing a song, closing our eyes, jiggle a little bit, you know, uh, and all that can be learned expressions. But if our heart is not there, if we don't mean the words that we sing, then it is fake. And God looks right at us and He sees that our heart is somewhere else. Right? And uh, we are not responding as we should be responding to Him. When we come before the presence of God, let every word, you may not be a good singer, but let your heart connect with everything that you sing or that you say. Let your heart be connected to God as you lift up your hands. Let your heart be connected to God as you, you know, um, Pray to Him. Because if your heart is not, if it's disconnected, then we are just going through the motions. So there must be authentic worship. When there is authentic worship that rises up before God, we would attract the presence of the Lord and He comes to move in a greater measure. Now, theologically, obviously, God fills this place. Right? And He is everywhere. But for us, for us to feel Him, for us to receive from Him, for us to you know, um, be sensitive to Him, we have to res give Him a right response. And His presence begins to be stronger as, you know, to us when we come before his, for Him. So there must be authentic worship. The fifth thing is this, you come with eager expectation. If you don't expect from God, then you won't receive from the Lord. God honors faith. If you want to be used by God, then you have to come before the Lord. This is the God I'm waiting for you to move in our midst. I'm waiting to see some healings. I'm waiting for you to speak to us. I'm waiting for a prophetic word. I'm waiting for us that our worship will go beyond that and take us to another level. And I let there be new songs that will come forth. There will be birth. You come and with greater expectation and faith. There was this preacher who took the daughter to go and buy some things. So he says, and he went in and uh, he says, choose anything you want. The daughter was very mindful, you know, okay, don't want to choose expensive things. Then that says, go and buy anything you want, right? Today's your birthday. So the daughter went and chose something that, you know, was very reasonable. And he bought it. And as he went out, the girl was very happy. But the father told the daughter this. He says, I'm disappointed with you. The daughter was surprised. Why are you disappointed me? Because I gave you permission to choose what you want. Choose the very best. And he says, that's what... I, so, the little girl grew up. And he says, became a minister. And then he, whenever she asked him, God, she learned the lesson. He says, when I'm asking from the Father, I don't know, ask second best. I want to ask God for the very best things. Even for things that I think are very hard. But Lord, I believe in you. I'm going to ask you for big things. I'm not going to limit you. Sometimes, you see, God is able to do all things and many things. But we ourselves with a mind limit God. I think it's too hard. I think it's too much for us to ask from God. And therefore, we don't do it. 
May we come with great expectation. Tremendous power can be released. God is a no respecter of persons. If you believe it, He will act according to your faith. Then the last thing is this. As you come in the house of God, be available. Now, I did not check with Jim, right? He gave a word just now. And that was good, right? But I'm, not, I'm talking to him right now. I'm talking to him right now. Huh? You came expecting to be used by the Lord, didn't you? You came praying that God will use you. Did you not? Do you know who Jim is? He was out there. Yeah, he came expecting. He came expecting and he came saying, oh, God, use me. I know because he dared to step out. Because only when you're prepared, you say, God, I am available, then it says the Lord would use you. Because you're all prepared to say, God, I'm here. I believe in this. I take you on your word. Use me. And when you come in in the same attitude and expectation, now, you may say, Pastor, um, moving so far to be used by the Lord, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not there yet. That's fine. That's all right. Not everyone is being used in the gifts of the Holy Spirit in a congregation like this. But all of us can come with expectation, God, I expect you to move. God, I'm coming here. I may not have a need, but someone else in the congregation have a need. I'm expecting, Lord, for you to touch them, touch me as well, touch various people, show us an evidence of the presence of your presence in our midst. The, the first church that I planted, oh, and Pastor Sheila and I planted, we named it Shekinah Assembly of God. And that's with specific uh, purpose. Shekinah is a Hebrew word, right? So sometimes when we tell her, what, what church is that? Shekinah, and we are, what, what does that mean? And that gives us an opportunity for us to explain. Shekinah actually means the localized glory and expression of God in a particular place. The glory of God is everywhere. You look at the sun, the sky, the seals, you know, the, the, the nature and all that. It speaks about the greatness and the glory of God. But Shekinah means there is a time whereby God chooses to appear. Like the time whereby He was there, you know, with the three Hebrew children who were thrown into the fiery furnace. There was a fourth person walking there. And even Nebuchadnezzar could see the fourth figure. And what happened is that the miracle was that none of the three Hebrew children were actually burned, no smell of, you know, uh, burnt smell upon them. They were totally well. Whereby those who threw them inside all, all died. So it was, the glory of God was revealed. And you know, you know that says that um, when Jesus began to trans be transfigured before Peter, James and John, and they saw Him in all His glory, at the Mount of Transfiguration. It's a localized place whereby the glory of God is seen, is felt, it's been expressed. And so we call our church at the time Shekinah Assembly of God because we say, God, we want this place that people walk in, they can feel your presence, they can be touched by you, your word comes as a sword, no lives are going to be changed, disciples are going to be made, and people are going to say, God is there. But it all comes to us when we uh, come before the Lord in faith, before Him. Spiritual preparation. Now, that is great. And there is a second thing we need to prepare for, and that is our mental and preparation of the soul. Now, how do we prepare ourselves mentally? First, if you want to be used by God, we have to clean up our minds. Because much happens is from the thoughts that God gives to us or the pictures I'm going to share with you later on of how God will speak to us predominantly through our mind, through our thinking, through our thoughts. And therefore, if we lend ourselves, it's the image of our mind has been lent over to, you know, to uh, dwell on negative things and sinful things or cheating or evil, you know, um, of fear, right, of violence, then you find that that is what occupies your mind. When you come 
Before the Lord, you try to receive from God, all those images will pop up in your mind and you find yourself, how come I don't... Whenever you try to keep it quiet, you know, all these images come because that's what you've been exposed to. Right? We've got to clean up our mind. If you're involved in, in um, you know, letting yourself and thinking about thoughts of lust, right? Um, then he says that you must stop that. Whenever those things pop up, you must clear that immediately and delete it from your mind. Because God speaks to us today, clean up your soul. Like I mentioned, you know, an uh, area of rage and bitterness and slander and wickedness. And all the things that are there, all the negative and emotions of revenge and hatred. We've got to clean that up from our soul and ask God, cleanse me. I know that life is not easy. I know that life is difficult and things have been unfair to you, you know, and uh, you wish, you know, that it did not happen, but it did. And right now, someone has shot an arrow in your heart. What do you do? Leave that there to let it fester, to let it grow, you know, and be, until it becomes a gangrene, it begins to hurt all the rest of the places. One of the frightening things about Diabetes is this, when there is an infection, it can be easily cured for a normal person that is healthy. And because of the condition of a too high sugar level, that infection does not get cured, but it rather begins to spread. And when it spreads too much, death happens all around. All those who are healthy areas, those of antibiotics could have done the job very quickly for a normal person. But when there is an infection, you know, lack of sugar balance in the person's life. Uh, the gangrene begins to be a very, very dangerous thing. So we've got to clean up the soul. Don't allow spiritual gangrene to begin to eat up various places in our hearts. The other thing is to lock in the password. What's the password to receive the things of God? Okay? You don't find it in the Bible. Uh, <laughs> What's the password? What's the password, God? I'm a pastor. What's the password? Um, I just put it simply this way. The password is just SJH. If you have these few words, you no know, ringing your mind, your heart, you know, every time you want to be used of God, remember SJH. That means serve Jesus humbly. When you want to be used in the gifts, it is always about service to serve. And it is always Jesus that you are supposed to magnify. And when God does use you, be very, very humble. Don't rise up in pride. Oh, God is now using me. You know, and uh, we look, our noses begin to point up in the, in the sky. In the, in the sky. Be very careful. When your nose points in the sky, it's very easy to trip on. You try that. Try looking up. You won't be able to see what is down on the floor. Huh? Then clear, get a clear signal, get a clear frequency. Do you know that um, when you're tuning into something, you want to tune into a very, very good frequency? Right? Um, we have used radios before, and uh, when the frequency is not strong and not clear, and we haven't got it properly dialed in, there is a lot of interference. And the signal is not clear. And when the signal is not clear, like when I would to drive you know, um, to the outreachers, and sometimes we would put it on the, the FM radio, right? From one signal, no, let's say it's uh, 105.7. If you drive down past Negri Sembilan or so, no, the signal begins to be different, right? Um, there begins to be interference, and you need to switch on to another frequency that has the same channel because it's been broadcasted from another uh, no, uh, radio station. The same thing, you know, they're connected, but it is a different number altogether. So, the thing that you've got to get a clear frequency. And that's why it's important that when we come to the house of God, we need to quieten down our thoughts. Quieten down our thoughts so that in order for us to hear from God. Now even in when you are going through a very difficult time in your life, when you're having what we call, I would call a tunnel experience. If you go through a tunnel even on your hands and phone sets. Do you realize that sometimes your signal gets lost? Now, I know that when I drive, when I'm on hands-free, driving from 
you know, uh, from the Marcus Brigade, even to church. We go through the tunnel. There are two, there are two tunnels there, right? Uh, one longer one, one shorter one. And if I'm on the phone on hands-free, the, the signal either gets very weak or the signal gets lost when I go through the tunnel because it's all enclosed, you know, and it's going to get through. The thing is this, especially when you're going through a tunnel experience in your walk and you're going through a various difficult challenge, that tendency because you are bombarded with a lot of emotions, a lot of struggles, with a lot of uh, tension, that signal begins to be weakened because there are so many voices in your mind and head. And that's why it's good for you to come down, to get to a quiet place, put those thoughts, other thoughts aside, and then to hear from God. Right? Then goes on the area, another area of, for us to take action. To every time you need to take action, there must be a step of faith. God honors faith, and therefore we have to take that step. And uh, when we take the action, the action must be consistent with the word, and it must not be done to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. So we take that action not to prove ourselves, not to say, hey, look at me, eyes turn upon me. No, we turn the eyes of the people upon the Lord. But we have to step out in faith. It requires us to do it. Faith means there is the element of failure that is involved in it. Many people dare not move out in the gifts of the Spirit of God because it says, what if I say the wrong thing? What if it does not happen? What if you know that I pray for the person, the person's sickness get worse? Or you know, if, uh, if I would pray for a breakthrough and a breakthrough does not happen. You have got to take a step of faith. When we have died to self, and when we say, Jesus, I'm only doing this because you tell me to, I'm putting my own reputation on a line, God, I'm going to do it for your glory. All of us who use, we use in the gifts must take steps of faith. And we've got to then, as we do that, we've got to do that more and more to fan the flame. This is what it says, we fan the flame Spend time to hear from God. I think two weeks ago I did share with you that God has a key that will open and unlock every problem that you are facing. You and I need to hear from Him and wait to receive from the Lord. We need to stretch our wings and we need to receive great Bible teaching. Get yourself exposed to teachings, you know, on the area of gifts. Watch how people move in those gifts. Learn those teachings and uh, weed out those that are not of the Word of God. But this is what the Scripture tells us. Oops, I suppose we are... Oh, okay, now I know why. So there, is a, there is a Scripture verse that is there. And it says, a fan in the flame, the gift of God that was given to you through the laying on of my hands. Right? That is taken from the book of Timothy. Fan the flame. Blow it up so that it will, you know, a larger fire can uh, happen. Now, how, do, how does God speak to us in regards to spiritual gifts? I will give you a sampling of this, of how you can receive from the Lord whether it be the word of knowledge or prophecy or the word of wisdom or discerning of spirits, right? God will sometimes show you a picture. Like this morning when I released that word to you, I told you the picture that I saw in my mind, right, of that person, right, who was crying in a corner, okay? So God will drop that picture. I did not get that picture, you know, because yesterday I watched some HBO on uh, what... Uh, what they call the astro, right? And uh, from, uh, from YouTube things that I was... So the things that we put in our minds are very important, okay? So God will drop a picture into your mind or it can be a scripture verse. God can remind you of a scripture verse. And that obviously, if you put that scripture verse into memory, He will remind you of it. Or it can be a word. Sometimes it can be just one word that the Lord would show you 
And when you look at an individual, God will speak that one word to you and then you release it. I don't know what. And it says that this is how I've, I see when I pray for you, this word keeps on coming to my mind. And you then begin to release that word to the person. Bible does say that it gives us dreams and visions. Visions are things that you see, you know, when your eyes are open. Dreams are things that you see when your eyes are closed. Therefore, it says that it's very important on what you place into your mind. Okay? Don't have pictures and dreams from what you, you know, you have, you have been playing games on a computer, fighting, shooting, you know, um, clearing one obstacle or another, you know, bombing this, kicking this and all that, and all the obstacles, because if that's what fills your mind when you close it, it is hard for you to receive from God. They can be impressions that God gives and they place it upon your heart. Something that you feel on the inside, you will know. Or it's sensation. It can be a sensation in your hands. You don't have that pain, but you come and suddenly, as you walk into the service, you find that your left hand, you know, is very painful on, I mean, the wrist is very painful. And you know that you did not twist it, you did not hurt it, you did not know... Uh, break your fault, you do not do anything about it, you don't have arthritis, you don't have rheumatism, but you have that pain. Sometimes again, when you pray for the individual God and the pain gets hard, and God can remind you, that person, pray for the individual, ask the person, do you have a pain on your left wrist? He is trying to tell you of a condition of another person, right? Or it can be that you hear an inner or an audible voice. The audible voice is when you hear it, like what I'm, you're hearing me now, okay? Or it says the main, most of the times it's an inner voice that you hear. So all these things, okay, whatever is inside, but your, your, the, the words, the pictures, the impressions, the sensations, therefore it needs to be that your being, your, your inner self will be properly primed and be ready for God to speak to you. Because if we walk in a compromised way, then when those, when God wants us to use us, then we were very doubtful. Oh, yeah, I think it could be this. I think it could be that. I think, no, that's what I did. I think that was what I was exposed to. Then you will be in a lot of doubt and you will not be able to be used of God and there's a tendency to make mistakes in those areas. Lastly, let me share with you some guidelines in operating the gifts. Some of the some simple guidelines. One is this always remain a teachable learner. Don't come to a place whereby, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. Hey, no need to teach me, no need to teach me. No, 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 I, I, no you don't have to t- t- talk to me. You don't have to counsel me. I know, I know, I know. Hey, I've been longer t- than you, you know, as a Christian. Okay? Uh, I, was your, I was your Sunday school teacher. Or, you know, I taught you uh, in cell group. You know, that is pride speaking. Always remain a teachable, what? Learner. Be teachable. There's not, nothing more obnoxious than a person who is prideful and does not want to learn. Pride is one thing, but spiritual pride, it's smelly. It's terribly smelly. So, be always a learner. Be very reluctant to use the word the Lord says, or the Lord showed me. Why? Unless you're very sure that's what the Lord did, showed you. But don't tack His name and put it on and gives you more credibility. Because when it does not happen, when it does not take place, then you we know the person is bringing shame to the name of the Lord. Okay? What do we say? We, we ask, you know, does this mean anything to you? This is what I felt. This is what I sense. This is the word that I see. This is the picture that I have in my mind, you know, um, so that, well, if it's wrong, if we did not hit it on a target, then it's my fault. I didn't hear. But God did not make a mistake. It is me. You see, whenever we do anything that is wrong and when we have a miss as far as the spiritual gifts are concerned, God does not make the mistake. We are the ones that make a mistake. And so be very careful when we say, the Lord says. And when you receive a word or you give a word, especially when you receive a word, 
always bring that word back for confirmation or for elimination to God. He says, Lord, this is what the person said to me. I'm a little bit confused. Show me, is it from you? Show me what I'm supposed to do the word. Okay? Don't immediately run to it. In the church here, we don't have Christian fortune teller. You need something, uh, leader, leader, tell me what to do. Then leader say, oh, I think I used to do this. Yeah, okay, 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 I do this, I do this. No, no, no. We don't operate. You tell me if there are any Christian fortune tellers here in our church. <laughs> uh, we, we don't encourage that. We, every word that you hear, someone tells you something, get back to God, listen to the Father. If it is not from the Lord, eliminate it. Okay? If it is from God, God will confirm it in your heart. It's important for us to have, we're operating these gifts, do not give directives. Do not give directives. What do you mean directives? It means you give specific instructions. You know, the Lord shows me, huh? uh, first of all, you're not supposed to use the word, the Lord shows me. Uh, that you're supposed to resign from this job and get to the other, this job here. You know, uh, the Lord shows me you need to invest with me. Eh? I'm selling insurance. You need to invest with me. You know, this insurance program, sure. You know, your coverage and then there will extra. And uh, you, you start giving directives. Okay, uh, I, I think this house is sui. Uh. Not, not, not nice, you know. It's bad. Okay, I think you need to move into this. And then you become feng shui master also. <laughs> and, and do this and do that. You don't give directives in this area, Right? You ask the person to pray. Ask, them to, ask from God. You know, um, I, I, just, I just sense that there could be something else. Go and pray. You know, is there something been done uh, in your house? I, I said with some, I know, uh, have you brought in some things that you have not have, um, been aware of? Now, in operating the gifts, it is be orderly but allow for messiness. You will look in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says everything must be done orderly. If there's a word, if there's a prophecy, if there's a song, let it be done one after another orderly. But at times there's some messiness. Messiness in the sense, you know, when the Spirit of God moves upon a person, the person could shake, the person could tremble, the person can fall down under the power of God. You know, we need to move the chairs away, someone may drop next to you. Right, and the uh, Spirit of God may be touching the person, and it may a little bit be, you know, unnatural. And, uh, you're not used to that, but it's all right. Okay, God knows what He's he, what He's doing, and let the Lord work in the lives of the people. Be orderly, but allow for some messiness, because when it's too cut, no, too no, clean, too. Uh, control, then you find that there is no activity of the Spirit of God. Because everything, you know, can be managed. And we manage everything and it runs so well that we manage the Spirit of God out of the picture even. Okay? Someone said this. It says that churches can, most, many churches can operate week after week after week, even without the help of the Holy Spirit. And that's not a good thing. Be orderly, but allow for messiness. And then seventh is this, be submitted to leadership. I know God may use you in the area of a gift, but the gifts are always submitted to the Lord and they're submitted to leadership. So in a sense, you know that the word that is there while I'm preaching, don't suddenly someone stand up and say, I've got a word from God and you stand up and then you inter in interrupt the service. So there's a place. Look for a time of quietness. Look for a time of a lull in the worship when everything tapers down and then brings a word from the Lord. Okay? Don't, when, don't, don't bring it when the worship is at the highest. Suddenly you try to scream on top above the worship and then when you cannot get the attention of people, then you start becoming a prophet and start scolding the people. You know, God tells me to lower down the volume there. Sound man, drummer, cut down, come down, listen to the word. Then you are, then you are fighting you know, in a service. Okay? I know I'm, I'm giving you some, um, what is it, examples that are 
just a little bit exaggerated, but you get the picture. Okay? Be submitted to leadership. Lastly is this. We don't need a clearer definition of spiritual gifts. We need a clearer demonstration of spiritual gifts. And it's for us to experience. May God help us. and helps us through the area as we access it through prayer. The God First meeting has been happening for a few years right now. And we thank God that we have a faithful group of people that comes together to pray. All in last year, about 60 old people have come. come go, and they come in and go out, come in and go different weeks and so forth. But more or less, a core group of about 12 people are, are always there for prayer. So the others will add in here and there. And we've been praying and interceding for various needs and so forth. Um, we have uphold the country, we uphold the church, we uphold nations in crisis. But I felt, you know, that um, this, from this point onwards, that we begin to change a little bit the direction of the meeting on God first on Saturday. We've been praying for a lot of requests in one particular meeting. It is like a you know, shotgun, boom, you know, uh, 30, 40, 50, I don't know how many bullets come out. But it says it's more going to be a rifle shot. We want to penetrate for breakthroughs. We want to seek the face of God until we have a breakthrough in that particular area. And uh, we started last, uh, yesterday. And one of the specific things that we're targeting is that God, we want to be able to be used by the Holy Spirit in spiritual gifts. And this is what we will pray. We will pray for one, one, one request only for that entire morning. And uh, we're not going to straight away jump into another request because as we've seen something happen, but are we satisfied? We've got to press in until they know that little trickle becomes a stream. And when it comes a stream of you know, the oil of God flowing in, and it says, God, from the oil, Lord, we want that to be a river of God that will flow. And it says, you will have free movement in our midst. And yet the service is so powerful and anointed, word-centered, life-changing, an encounter that we're going to have in the presence of the Lord. We're praying for breakthroughs. And I believe that God has greater things in store for us that we can never imagine. 